So hi, my name is Lee Hammock. I'm a diagnosed narcissist, and I'm here to bust some myths and tell you what it's all about from a narcissist perspective. So my name is Lee Hammock. I have been clinically diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. I am 36 years, 37 years old. Um, I've built a platform of over 2 million people on social media by, you know, discussing narcissistic personality disorder, the traits that come along with it, helping people understand it from a, the perspective of someone who's actually diagnosed with it, as opposed to just getting information just from all over the internet or whatever, because there's, you know, there's a lot of conflicting things out there about narcissism. So I feel like the best source sometimes, not all the time, is coming directly from, you know, a person diagnosed with it. Okay, so we've all heard the word narcissist a lot lately. Lindsay kicked things off by announcing he'd hired two psychologists to evaluate Donald Trump, who diagnosed him as 10 out of 10 narcissist. That's right. You hear that? I'm 10 out of 10. I don't know what narcissist means, but if it's about me, it's gotta be good. And there have been more than a few examples on our screens. I'm sorry that people are so jealous of me, but I can't help it that I'm popular. What is Narcissistic Personality Disorder? Diagnosed NPD is when you actually go to a clinical psychologist or therapist, whoever you see for your mental health uh, issues and things like that, when they take you through the process of, you know, seeing if you meet the criteria to be diagnosed with Narcissistic Personality Disorder or any other cluster B personality disorders like borderline, uh, histrionic, antisocial and anything like that. You know, any kind of mental health issues and things like that. So it's different than just being called a narcissist. You actually go to therapy for and you know, you get diagnosed by an actual therapist with it. What are the traits of a diagnosed narcissist? So some of the traits of NPD are, you know, a grandiose sense of self. Like most narcissistic people think that they are better than other people just because they are themselves. I'm better than you because I'm me. There's no, there might not be any kind of qualifications behind that. It's just, I'm better than you because I am me and you are not. A lot of times narcissistic people believe that, that way right there. Another one is delusions of grandeur, thinking that we deserve more just because of who we are as well. You know, we think we deserve to be, you know, president of the United States or of any uh, uh, prime minister of a country or something like that, just because we are ourselves again and things like that you know um sensitivity to criticism like when you're dealing with a narcissistic person toxic person whatever there's no such thing as constructive criticism it's all criticism you know it it all hurts you can't correct me in any type of way without me feeling like you are attacking me personally and things like that those are just a few off the top of my head i mean there's a, a few more but those are typically the ones that kind of come out first hang on that sounds like quite a few people i know so most people have narcissistic traits just for survival and things like that, just for, for perseverance and surviving in today's world. Most people are just not in just today's world, just surviving the planet Earth. Most people have narcissistic traits of just per persevering and protecting themselves anyway. But the personality disorder is diagnosed. I think there is 0.5% of 1% of the population that is clinically diagnosed with narcissistic personality disorder. Um, of course, there are more narcissists out there than what is diagnosed because most people don't go get diagnosed. Most narcissists in most narcissists are not going to go sit in a therapist chair and let them let a therapist or a psychologist or whoever tell them that something is wrong with them and things like that. So there's a difference. So everybody has narcissistic traits and tendencies, but the personality disorder is different because it's pervasive. It's, you know, it's a pattern of toxic behaviors and things like that, self-destructive behaviors and things of that nature right there. So what's the hardest thing about being a narcissist? I feel like you're not in control. You're not in control of who you are or what you're doing. You you are present of who you are. Like, you know, you I'm present of who I am, but not all the time in what I'm doing or why I'm doing the things that I do. Sometimes it feels like I'm on autopilot. Like I'm the I'm I'm here, I'm present, I can see you, like I'm talking to you right now. But sometimes it's like my body is moving by itself, my hands are moving by itself, and my mouth is speaking by itself sometimes. Are there any benefits to being a narcissist? So some of the, so this is going to sound crazy. I, I know one of the benefits of being a narcissist is kind of like one of those questions like, you know, what, huh? What, what, what can, what, how can you benefit from being a narcissist? So I feel like the biggest benefit for me in what I do is that I, I can, you know, I, the, I, I honestly think the benefit for me right now is my lack of empathy, my lack of, you know, honestly, it sounds weird, but it allows me to connect to people more on a logical level and explain to them 
on a logical level as opposed to getting emotions involved in it. You know, because I think a lot of people, when you get emotions too involved in it, it, it deludes your thought process. You know, it deludes your your reactions and things like that. So I, if I'm coming here from a lack, a lack of empathy and a lack of connection, I can take a step back and look at the situation. I can analyze the situation, especially in somebody else's life and give them reasonable, logical information from a perspective of a narcissist or, you know, a person that, that they're dealing with. So I feel like that's actually, uh, I've made my, my weakness into a strength now with my platform and stuff like that. Cause like, I can just like, okay, I, I understand what you're going through. I can, I have that cognitive empathy or whatever. I understand how I should feel and how you should feel, but I still can just not connect to it and give you a perspective, a logical perspective, which I think helps out a lot of people. I connect to people. I, I'm not saying I don't connect at all, but I don't connect to them just deeply. And I'm just like crying with them and stuff like that. You know, I'm just like, okay, I can remove the tears and I can just process. I can kind of dig through it and see it. You know, it helps me out a lot just in that aspect. In that, that, that thing. What's the biggest myth about being a narcissist? I, so, so I think self-confidence comes with narcissists. I think it's the, the appearance of self-confidence. I think a lot of narcissists are super, a lot of narcissists are super insecure people. So it's the appearance of self-confidence. It's the bravado. It's that the, the, the outward appearance sometimes that makes up for the actual inner insecurities. So a lot of narcissists appear to be self-confident, but they, we, we just aren't, you know. So the confidence myth is busted. What are some of the other common misconceptions? Oh, I think one of the biggest myths out here that all narcissists are intentionally hurting people. You know, I think that's one of the biggest myths. Like, do do a lot of narcissists hurt people? Absolutely, yes. A lot of narcissists do a lot of bad things. But the intent is not to hurt people all the time. Sometimes the intent is just to make that make, make themselves happy, but the impact is different. My, I intend to make myself happy by doing they might by cheating sometimes, you know, or lying. I intend to make myself happy by doing this, but the impact hurts you. Did I know it would hurt you if you found out? Yes, absolutely. But the intent wasn't to hurt you. The intent was to make myself happy, but the impact was hurting you, you know? So I just feel like not all narcissists are out to intentionally hurt you and things like that. Um, and another myth I would just say is that narcissists don't, don't love at all. There are, you know, all narcissists are not the same, you know, some narcissists do think do at the beginning of a relationship they do think that they are in love with you you know they do think that they are in love with you and they want to be with you they become like this obsessive super love with you and stuff like that but they fall out of love and once they fall out of love they start they start to treat you horribly and like whatever it's like we love you until we don't and then like some something in our minds disconnects from that person and then the love is like a love the love switch just turns off it's just like blank the love switch goes to go, the love switch just goes off completely and then it's like you don't know the person anymore it's like i don't know you anymore so i don't care about you the same anymore because you don't look the same to me anymore in, in my eyes like my heart doesn't feel the same way that it used to about you and things like that lee how did you come to being diagnosed so when i was about 32 years old i was um at home watching my young son and i was i was yelling at my six month seventh some seven month old son about how he was holding me back from life and my goals and dreams and things like that. And my wife happened to come home during that argument. And when she came home, we, me and her got into an argument, of course, because I was yelling at a six month old. Um, and then on her way out the door, on her way out the door, she said, it's so hard to live with a damn narcissist. And I was just like, you know, I didn't know what narcissist was. I thought it was just some kind of egotistical person. Somebody, you know, just held themselves in high esteem. So. I called her a narcissist on the way out the door and she left. And then I just, I looked it up, you know, because I had, I looked it up. I found out the traits and symptoms of it and things like that. And I was like, dang, because I always, my entire life, I have always felt different. I always kind of felt like I was out of place in the world just because I felt like an alien pretty much, you know, I felt like an alien in the world because I, my thoughts, you know, I just felt like my thoughts clicked differently than other narcissists, I mean, than other human beings and other people. So I just thought, I, mean, I just thought I was different. I didn't have a word for it. When I, when I discovered narcissistic personality disorder, it gave me a word or a term to describe how I felt, to describe my feelings and who I was and why I do the things that I do and why I feel the way that I feel about certain things and, you know, and whatnot. How can NPD be treated? So me personally, I just do psychotherapy, which is talk therapy, because like I said, I talk a lot. My, pro, my platform is talking 100%, you know? So I do a lot of talking and things of that nature. So in therapy, all you do is talk and you, you know, she asks you the right questions. It's kind of like digging. It's kind of like taking a shovel and digging, but, but it's just, you just start digging by talking. 
you know, and you kind of, the, the more you talk, the more the therapist can guide you to the answers to why you do the things that you do, can guide you to the answers as to why you feel the way that you feel. So I've been, spent five years talking to someone about this and being open and honest and vulnerable because I can go to, I can go to therapy. Anybody can go to therapy and talk to the therapist and lie and manipulate the therapist by giving them half truths and things like that. I go to therapy and I'm just telling them straight out what's going on in my mind, you know, because when I tell them what's going on in my mind, it helps, it helps her. It helps her tell me what's going on. It helps me understand what I need to work on and what I need to process for the, after that appointment, you know? So it's really, for me, what's worked best is talk therapy, just going in there and just talking it out and being open and honest and vulnerable, which a lot of people see, a lot of narcissists see vulnerability as, you know, as a form of weakness, pretty much. Can narcissism be cured? Just because I've been in therapy so long, I do feel like my control over my disorder has increased, but it, the, 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 the disorder hasn't went away. You know, my control has increased, but the disorder hasn't went away. My thought, the thoughts are still there. You know, the thoughts are still there. I still have those same similar or similar thoughts, but the control in my way, my way of reacting is better. Instead, yeah, my way, my way of responding to people is a lot better than what it used to be because I used to just react to people immediately. I didn't let them finish talking. I would just jump down their throat. Now through therapy and working on myself, <laughs> I take, I take what that person is saying. I listen to the person and then I respond to the person as opposed to reacting to them. I still react. I still react sometimes. It's, I'm, I'm not a perfect person by any means. You know, I'm still going to react negatively or angrily sometimes when I shouldn't, but that's part of this part of the process. I don't do it as much as I used to, you know, I used to be, I used to rage out and get angry a lot, but now I have months or a lot, I have a long period, I have long periods of peace when I'm doing this now. You know, I have, I can have peace while I'm, you know, raging out and stuff like that. I can have peace when I'm speaking to people. So that's helped me out a lot on this, you know, just on this, this journey of you know, self development, personal development now. Let's talk about NPD and relationships. Has your narcissism impacted yours? My experience, so all my relationships, so I'm still married to the same person now. She did leave. But uh, she came back because I was in therapy working on myself, you know, and show consistent change behavior. Like I tell most people, like, don't come back unless they are showing consistent change behavior. But my relationship it ha it's had its ups and downs. You know, she's left. Uh, we've married. We they almost got divorced um, because, again, I, I lose the emotional. Con I used to lose the emotional connection because I didn't know what was going on in my head, you know. So I would lose the emotional connection from her and I would treat her like I didn't care about her. I would treat her like I didn't love her, you know, and she felt that deeply. But she would stick around and try to fix me and try to work on me because she saw the potential in me to to love me. She's like, if I, just, if I just love him, I love him harder. He'll be better for me. He'll go back to the person he was in the beginning of the relationship. But it doesn't work that way, you know. So in the end, she had to leave because she realized that there's nothing she could do to fix me. She had to leave for herself, you know. So and now she's she's been back for about two years now. We have a a new daughter, you know. She's a little bug, but you know we love her and whatnot. But like it's it's been hard work. It's not easy. I think people one of the main questions that I get on my platform is, can you have a normal relationship with a narcissist? And I don't think I don't think normal exists in a world with a narcissist. I don't think a normal you it, it doesn't work that way. You know, can a narcissist be in a happy relationship? Yeah, if if, if if it's hard work, you can do it if that person is willing to do it for themselves. They had like I like my wife left and I still was going to therapy. I think that's one of the reasons she came back. I didn't stop going to therapy because she left. She left and I was still going because I go to therapy to work on myself to make everything else around me better. But I have to do it to work on myself. You know, she left and I was still going because most people, if they go to therapy, if you leave them, they'll stop going to therapy because the only reason they're going to therapy is to keep is to keep you there. She left and I was still going, you know, it's just like because I know therapy is not just to keep her here. It's for me to live a better existence, whether she's here or not. A lot of people have found themselves in relationships with narcissistic people. What are the biggest dangers? So I feel like the biggest danger in being in a relationship with a narcissist is losing your own identity, you know. I feel like that's one of the biggest dangers of being in a relationship with a narcissist, toxic person, whoever, is losing who you are, trying to fix this person and trying to help this person be better. You know, no narcissistic person can be better without themselves, without them themselves wanting to be better. You know, without them themselves wanting to put the work in on themselves. 
a lot of people think that they can heal a narcissist or they can fix a narcissist or they see that they are broke. They feel like they are dealing with a broken person. So you try to you give pieces of yourself trying to fix this broken person. Maybe, you know, you cannot outlove the trauma that made somebody a narcissist. You can't do that. They have to want to go work on themselves. So I feel like the biggest danger is lack of loss of identity, loss of self. And typically, like, you get isolated and you lose pretty much a lot. You lose a lot, you know. How does narcissism develop in people? So for me, uh, more than anything, it comes from just trauma. Most times it comes from trauma in your childhood, like un- trauma that you haven't dealt with yourself in your childhood. That is unresolved trauma that makes you develop this narcissistic personality. You know, I'm not a narcissist at my core. My core is a wounded inner child. The, but the outside of that core, the, the you know, like this is like kind of like the earth, you know, how the earth has its core. The, the core of the earth is the inner child of the narcissist. The rest of it is the narcissist. So it, 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 you have to hack away through that surface level to get to the inner child to even begin to work on that narcissistic person. You see what I'm saying? The trauma creates the narcissistic part. The, the trauma creates the narcissistic personality to this disorder. You know, so most narcissists are created through trauma. And some, 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 I think I've seen some evidence of people saying that narcissistic, it doesn't require trauma sometimes. It can just be, you know, you grow up and your parents don't tell you no. Like you, you grow up with no boundaries and you just become narcissistic because nobody ever tells you no. You know, you just grow up and you kind of raise yourself because your parents are doing other stuff. So that's, I've heard of that as well. You know, for me, that's how I look at. I look at narcissistic personality disorder as a defense mechanism to protect their inner child. You know, like when I was young and when I was young and vulnerable, being vulnerable got me hurt. So it developed. I developed the narcissistic shell around my inner child to protect the inner child from vulnerability and stuff like that. So it is it is absolutely a defense. That's why you if you try to criticize somebody like a narcissistic person, they they come at you. It's just like they, they attack you, you know. If you're criticizing them or hold, try to hold them accountable or something like that, they come at you big time. It seems like there's been more discussion of narcissism now than ever before. Why is that? So I think narcissists have been around for a long time, but I think social media has shined the spotlight on narcissists more than anything now. It's like kind of like drug, drug narcissistic personality disorder and toxic behaviors out of the cave that it's been hiding in for so long. It's like shining a light on it right now. Um, I feel like it's also social media provides a lot of narcissists, uh, platform to get validation from and things like that by pretending to be something, something that they're not. Some narcissists, the people are online pretending to be survivors of narcissists, you know, some, and, you know, telling, telling the world the stuff that, ha- that they tell in the world, the stuff that they did to someone, they, they pretended like it happened to them. Like I'm a victim of this right here, but they actually are the ones who've actually done it, you know? So I feel like social media has both, it helped a lot of people heal, you know, but it's also provided a platform for a lot of narcissistic people to just pretend to be someone that they're not and just get, you know, supply and validation, whatever you want to call it now. I don't think that there are more narcissists around because of social media. I think social media has just, like I said, shined the light on narcissists. It showed because our grandparents could have been narcissistic and there was no camera in their face to show how, how just, you know, there's no camera in their face to show them who they were or what they were doing or show your grandma that your grandpa was a narcissist or show your grandpa that your grandma was a narcissist. You know what I mean? There's no DSM-5 for them to read through together and diagnose somebody else or see the toxic traits that they were going through and things like that. So those, a lot of those grandparents are still alive today being toxic, narcissistic people and social media didn't create them. You know, I just feel like generational trauma, like their parents could have been narcissists. Their grandparents could have been narcissists. It's like a system of, trauma being passed down from generations to generation to generation and nobody's working on themselves nobody's trying to heal that trauma they're just putting it to the side just like accepting it like a lot of times especially in old especially in the older days you could you couldn't really get divorced it was like embarrassing to, to separate the family so your grandmama could have been a narcissist and your grandpa could have been a good person but they had to stay married so they raised your parents in this toxic ass household because they couldn't get divorced. You know, so I think narcissists have been around for a very, very long time. It's just like the light is on there is, is on it right now, you know? And I think a lot of people are realizing what they're going through because of social media. Yeah. It's, it's, you know, I don't think social media creates narcissists. I think it's just shining a light on them more, more than anything. Okay. Lee advice time. What should people do if there is or has been a narcissist in their life? 
So my advice to people who are dealing with narcissists or who have dealt with narcissists, I always tell people to go to therapy, first of all, because they, they can help you heal. But second of all, understand that it, it, it's, you know, I feel like the, the abusive part was on the narcissist or the toxic person. The healing is on you. It's, you know, you can't heal by being just remaining angry as hell at that narcissistic person. You can't you can't heal that way. You have to you, the healing starts within. So you have to look within. You have to start working on yourself. Self-love helps, you know, working on yourself and healing, taking time to heal. Understand, like I said, understand that, that you can't change that person. You, 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 and nothing you ever do will be enough for that person either. You can change every single thing that that person wanted you to change, and they still wouldn't be happy with you. They still would be fine. They still find fault in something that you're not doing that they, that they want you to do. You would never, you would never be enough for the wrong person, but you can be enough for yourself. So work on you, love yourself from the inside out, and then just be as strong as possible. Empower yourself. Stay empowered. That's what I say. Okay. And if people want to get help, where can they find you? So my biggest platform is TikTok. Uh, I'm on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, uh, YouTube, everywhere. Uh, mental illness, like mental heal, H-E-A-L-N-E-S-S, illness on all platforms. Um, I can be reached through email, mental illness, 85, the number 85. I was born in 85, y'all. Uh, mental illness, 85 at gmail.com. And I also have a website up for, you can reach me otherwise, mental illness.net. Dot net, not dot com. Dot, dot com will take you somewhere else. Dot net. Mental illness dot net. <laughs>